Hi, you're watching the Waves Platform Channel. My name is Anna. This is our first crypto newscast. Germany has recognized Bitcoin as a legal tender. German authorities will not tax Bitcoin holders if they pay for goods and services with Bitcoin. Ukraine will recognize mining as a legal business activity. The past month was full of news related to ICO projects. The government of Uzbekistan has stated that the country is gradually moving towards a legal recognition of Bitcoin. Venezuela is to issue the state cryptocurrency Petro, backed by the country's oil resources. Ahead of news of Telegram's TON ICO, rumors have started to circulate that Viber is eager to run its own ICO. It is also reported that WhatsApp might run a token sale. British scientists have detected over 34,200 vulnerabilities in the Ethereum smart contracts. Theoretically, this can lead to a $6 million theft. We also have some important news. Wave smart contracts are on the way, so we have done an interview with Wave smart contracts developer Ilya Smagin. Enjoy watching. Hi, Ilya. Hi, Anya. You're the lead developer of Wave smart contracts. Tell us more about them. What will they be like? There will be two steps. The first step implies the introduction of restrictive scripts for accounts, somewhat similar to Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, a coin is locked by a script, allowing you to spend it according to particular conditions only. In Waves, the same will apply to the accounts. Restrictive scripts will allow you to withdraw funds from such accounts or to run a transaction using them only when particular conditions are met. That's step one. During the next step, we'll be launching Turing Complete Smart Contracts like those in Ethereum. Technically, they'll be similar, since all Turing-complete systems and languages are basically the same. Yet, Wave smart contracts will have their own positive distinctive features. So, there will be two steps. Tell us more about the first step. What will be done in the near future? Well, like I said before, we're introducing restrictive scripts for accounts. They let you withdraw funds in compliance with particular conditions. There'll be a multi-signature function, meaning that a number of people can own one wallet. Who would find it useful? Suppose three or four people have run an ICO. They are board members, but only one of them has the signature. That's not convenient. Multi-signature allows withdrawing funds in case three out of four members, or two out of four members, come to an agreement, for example. Another aspect is a two-factor authorization meaning you have a private key and a second means for authorization, a hardware device or a second private key. This makes the account more secure. Another big project we're working on is atomic swaps. They let you exchange currencies from different blockchains against each other. For example, you have some amount of Bitcoin and I've got some waves. We agreed to exchange them. As soon as I receive your Bitcoins, I disappear. That's uncool and you can't fix it. So there's a need for a third party that takes your bitcoins and my waves, exchanges them, and returns the exchange currencies to us. Like an intermediary? Yeah, an exchange, for example. The whole thing can be done without a third party. That's what atomic swaps are about. You deposit your bitcoins to a special bitcoin account. I deposit my waves to a special waves account. We both can withdraw the funds from these accounts only after we will give each other the secret number. Roughly speaking, when you withdraw the money from my Waves account, you give me a secret number, with which I can withdraw the Bitcoins from your account. Both transactions must be completed or neither of them will be fulfilled. That's why it's called atomic swaps. The third aspect of our work concern a functionality to freeze money for a particular time. For example, a token was issued and distributed via ICO but people immediately started selling token away. Token price dropped. The investors are gloomy, saying, why on earth did I choose this ICO? I wish I knew the price would drop. Smart accounts allow locking tokens for some time. Freezing tokens. Freezing tokens, exactly. Preventing them from being moved. That's some great functionality, I think. Yeah, these are just vivid examples. After all, it is a mechanism that answers a question whether you can or cannot run a transaction. Besides money transaction, it can be an issuance of a new token or a transaction before an issuance of a new token. By the way, we'll introduce oracles during the first step. Oracles transfer real-world data into the blockchain world. 
Suppose we're running a betting system. People bet on the team that will win the Olympics, and the winner gets the prize. How can Smart Contract find out which team won the Olympics? It cannot go to the IOC server, right? First of all, the data changes inevitably, so the answer has to be one and the same. That's what oracles are for. They post real-world data to the blockchain, so smart contracts are kept updated. This is some kind of a bridge between the real world and blockchain. There will also be data transaction that will back this mechanism. You'll be able to post exchange rates, stock prices, sport results, whatever. Smart contracts process the data and decide who becomes the winner and gets the reward. This functionality will be implemented during the first step. Yep. The second step is going to be more sophisticated. There will be new functions. We'll introduce Turing complete smart contracts into the system during the second step. Roughly speaking, they'll be somewhat similar to Eurethium smart contracts, but there will be some differences. We'll talk about the differences in our next video. Thanks for answering the questions. We'll do more detailed coverage of the smart contracts in the next video. Okay. Thanks for watching. That's all for today. Stay tuned for the next crypto newscast. Bye.